Sprint did something interesting with the Samsung Galaxy S. And no, you're not on the wrong video, just stay with me. It took the first edition Galaxy S and told Samsung that it wanted to add a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, and that's how we got the first iteration of the Epic. Then, when the Galaxy S2 came around, Sprint ditched the keyboard and added a whole bunch of words to the name. With Motorola's Photon line, Sprint has done just the opposite. It started with a simple slab with the first Photon, and for its sequel, it has added a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, as well as LTE support and a few other things. How does this new phone fare on the whole? Well, let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is PocketNow.com, and this is our full review of the Motorola Photon Q 4G LTE for Sprint. Let's get to it. At first glance, the new Photon seems almost identical to its predecessor, with its jet black body and Motorola's trademark cut corners. That illusion vanishes when you pick up the device, though. Compared to other modern smartphones, it's very thick at 13.7 millimeters, but for good reason. There's a slide-out surprise under there that we'll get to in a second. But given that added bulk, the new Photon feels lighter than you'd expect in the hand. In fact, before I realized that the 1785 milliamp hour battery was embedded, I thought I was handling a device without a battery inside. It's not featherweight at 170 grams, but it's certainly lighter than it looks. Up front here, the display is a 4.3-inch 540x960 TFT LCD with Motorola's Color Boost technology and displays uh, images at around 256 pixels per inch. Even though it's not an HD display, it looks gorgeous with brilliant colors and, for an LCD at least, relatively deep blacks. Motorola doesn't call out the glass covering it as Gorilla Glass exactly, but it does say it's scratch resistant. It's also quite a fingerprint magnet, more so than on other devices we've tested. Above it is the 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera, which shoots in 720p HD. And beside that, above the Motorola branding, is the earpiece, which also contains a large LED notification bar that, for me, only lit up when the device was charging. On the right side here are the hardware camera key and the volume controls. On the back is the lens for the 8 megapixel camera that shoots 1080p video with an LED flash right next door, a speaker a speakerphone grill down below, and though there's no mention in Motorola's literature of crystal talk noise reduction, there is a noise canceling microphone up here in the corner. On the left hand side, not much to see except a micro USB port and HDMI out. There's nothing going on on the bottom here, and up top, a headphone jack and the center-mounted standby and power button, which is very easy to access with a finger, very easy to get used to. The real fun part comes when you slide the unit open to reveal that five-row keyboard. The keys are LED backlit with adjustable side lighting, and Motorola says the keys themselves are laser cut. I don't know if you'd be able to tell that or what benefits that provides, but it sounds cool. More important is the keys click and travel. Typing on the Photon Q's keyboard is luxurious. You've got nothing but space on this wide board, and each key delivers a satisfying little click when pressed. The dedicated number row up top really, really helps with input speed. In all, it's one of the best physical keyboards we've ever used, packed into a device that feels equally comfortable in either one-handed or two-handed usage scenarios. Sprint customers considering this device will want to know how well it's going to hold up over the course of a two-year contract, so let's talk raw specs for a second. The phone is powered by a dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor running at 1.5 GHz, backed up by a gig of RAM and 8 gigs of onboard storage, with the usual microSD expansion up to an additional 32 GB. The phone also brings something interesting to Sprint customers on the radio side. In addition to domestic support for CDMA and LTE that gives the device part of its name, the Photon Q also offers international roaming with quad-band GSM and HSPA radios. That said, there's no user-accessible SIM. It's embedded, just like the battery, so it's not quite as useful if you want the freedom to use it on any overseas carrier you wish. Aside from that, radios include the usual Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi, BGNN, and support for NFC. The last time we checked out Motorola hardware was on the Atrix HD, which we liked a lot on the hardware side, but the software left us wanting more. So how does the new Photon stack up in the software department? In short, 
not too shabby. Motorola is running their sneaky phantom skin that's not really a skin on top of Android 4.0.4. It's subtle, but it's definitely there, and most of its tweaks are very useful, like the unlock to app shortcuts on the lock screen, and the Motorola Bubbles widget that we've talked about before, and which we like a lot. There's also the pop-up preview windows for some stock apps, which help out in a pinch, and also Motorola's Smart Actions suite, which allows you to set rules for different battery saving conditions, location-aware scenarios, and so forth. There's also support throughout the OS for landscape-based orientation when the keyboard is deployed. That's something we saw a lot on early builds of Android, like on the HTC G1 and the original Motorola Droid, and it's really nice to see it again here. Swapping between landscape and portrait still takes a few beats, and the phone is sometimes a little slow to wake up. There are drop frames and animations, especially when you call up the launcher. But overall, performance is perfectly acceptable if you're not a UI perfectionist. In the real world, the new Photon performed as well as it could. Don't get me wrong, that's not a knock on the device. The device is solid, but it's really hamstrung by Sprint's slow EVDO network. Testing the Photon 4G LTE was an exercise in frustration in the greater Boston area where download speeds never got above 600 kilobits per second. I don't know that, I, I know that doesn't sound too bad for 3G, but speeds even close to that only happened a handful of times. Most of our time with the new Photon was spent in the 100 to 200 kilobits per second range with very high ping times. Sometimes network communication issues were so bad that speed tests wouldn't even run. In a practical sense, that made regular use of apps like Pandora, Spotify, and Instagram painful, if not impossible. Already laggy apps like Facebook timed out often, and sending email attachments was hit or miss. It's a stark reminder of just how far behind Sprint is in network build-out, and how quickly their LTE build needs to happen. Thankfully, on the voice side, things couldn't be better. Motorola has a history of providing some of the best voice calling in the business, and that continues to be true here. Speakerphone performance was okay, but as usual, we wish it could have been louder. Sadly, another Motorola staple is an underwhelming camera, and we found that to be true here as well. It certainly isn't one of the worst cameras we've tested, but it has the same problems we see on a lot of mobile phones, where you're taking photos that include regions of both light and dark. Other phones, like the Galaxy S3 and the HTC Droid Incredible 4G LTE, compensate for this by including an HDR option in the camera software. Sadly, Motorola does not. In good light, the camera does pretty well, but in lower light situations, there's not much good to say here. And if you happen to be listening to music on the Photon Q via headphones, which sounds good, by the way, while taking pictures, congratulations, you've found an audio bug that's quite annoying. The music will, for a split second, come out the speakerphone as the phone makes the shutter sound. Finally, while the hardware camera button is nice, it doesn't wake the phone up from sleep, it doesn't feature half-press to focus, and is accordingly so useless we almost forgot it was there. The battery powering all this actually does pretty well, quite a surprise given its relatively meager milliamp hour rating. I was able to eke out about 14 hours on one charge with moderate to heavy use, and the power saving rules I set up in Smart Actions definitely helped a lot. When I turned power saving off, performance plummeted. There's no telling how this performance will fare once the device is using LTE, but on 3G, battery life on the Photon should be good to excellent for most users. So if you're on Sprint, or thinking of moving over to Sprint, and you want a device with a slide-out, hardware QWERTY keyboard, should you get the new Photon? Maybe. If you're in a big city that's not getting LTE anytime soon, maybe reconsider. If, though, you're constantly going to be on Wi-Fi, or if Sprint has announced that your market will be getting LTE in the near future, absolutely. If you live in an area where Sprint's 3G coverage and data speeds are good, then also, yes, go for it. I mean, your other options for a keyboard packing device on Sprint are a handful of dated Android devices, some Blackberries, and high-end Android phones from two years ago. But it's not just that the alternatives are kind of weak. I mean, this is a really 
really solid phone, and it's backed up by modern software that might lag occasionally, but it otherwise does its job quite well. The keyboard is great, the battery life is great, and it's available at Sprint.com for $199.99 on a contract. Not the cheapest phone around, but we think it's worth the price. We give the Motorola Photon Q 4G LTE an 8 out of 10. That's going to do it for me. I'm Michael Fisher with PocketNow.com. Thank you for watching our full review of the Motorola Photon Q 4G LTE. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we're at PocketNowTweets. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at CaptainTwoPhones. Uh, throw us a thumbs up here on YouTube if you like the video. If you have a comment, please leave it on the post at PocketNow.com. That's where our full review for this phone lives, and that's where we will respond to comments should you want a response. Thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, and we'll see you next time.